This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Annie and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brat, who's a longtime fan and he's guiding me on this journey. We'd like to thank and acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy Aaron Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Albert Lorenzo, Life Winded Fool, The Amarillin Seat, and Green Man. And before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome Lindsay Warren to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. And we also want to thank JLH for increasing their pledge over at patreon.com slash the Wheel Weaves podcast. Thanks so much for all your generosity and support. We really appreciate it. And before we get into this episode today, we want to thank and welcome John C. Salyer, Sandeep Sani, and Shia Bidoof to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really, truly appreciate it and couldn't do this without you. In this episode, we are talking about chapter 12 of The Path of Daggers. Yeah, so chapter 12 is New Alliances. Ooh. I always love the Dark Friend stuff. Yeah. It's always good to know what the Forsaken are up to. Okay, here's the thing. The first part of this chapter, thumbs up, like, four star rating. Four stars? Yeah, it could have been better. What? It could, it was, uh, it's pretty good. Four what? and a half. Four oh, and a half stars. Oh, man. Yeah. To be a five star cha- first half of a chapter for me has Do to be Do you, like, all service good. people just, like, hate you? <laughs> I don't, uh, maybe, because I don't review ever. I don't actually oh, write man. any okay. reviews about anything. Okay, okay. Good if or... you have an option, though, like, would you put, ever put? Five? Yeah. That's the only reason I would ever write a review would be to give somebody five stars. Okay, okay. And I can't remember Worried the last either. time I've ever given a review. I'm not somebody who's typically going to go write a review for Terrible. I'm just never going to go back. Okay, okay. But I would like to praise quality, like, service. Okay. When it's necessary. So, I like, I would, but, you know, I'm just hard to please, turns <laughs> out. I'm just super hard to please. But here's the thing. Super good. Yeah. And then... Second half of the chapter... Didn't care for it. The thing is... We need the meetup. But I had a lot of hope. It had me page turning. Sure. I was excited yeah. for what was about to happen. I was thinking we were going to get something. Or it's a new alliance. We were going to learn what's happening with Rand or... You know, I thought there was going to be kind of something else. Yeah. And then we get to the end of the chapter. You know, you just expect too much. And it was like, well. Uh, you expect too much uh, from one chapter. Yes. You can't have everything. I always. You can't have everything. I will. I have high the standards only time, and expectations. The only time you get to have everything in one chapter is when it's either the last or the second last chapter in the book. And then you just then you get, get everything and then you all get at once. Too much. You're like, what's happening? <laughs> you don't even know what's going on. That's the only time. It was just, I mean interesting a lot of i said i politics sure and and that kind of stuff names i didn't remember and had to look up well, or, well that's... not look up look up i'm not having a situation yeah. again where i'm looking things up <laughs> and by look up you mean ask fred about it right now while yeah, we talk about it so yeah I meant i'm like, gonna do that i'm gonna break go that to down. my handwritten notes on my i said i lists i'm gonna break this down let's do this and that's really what it comes down to yeah okay so start us off here we have one chapter to cover today and we're gonna have fun with it we are going to have fun with it so let's start us off fun grendel i'm sure you're wondering grandy why is grendel named grendel well it's because of grendel ah is so there, there a we grendel? Go. there is absolutely grendel so grendel is likely based on the creature grendel spelled g-r-e-n-d-e-l so we have a couple extra a's in our what well, grendel of course it's why wouldn't fantasy we? why wouldn't we and grendel is one of the three antagonists in the old english epic poem beowulf which is, like, super famous. I know of that one. That's because I've talked about it before, too. Well, I also probably yeah. knew of it before you talked about it. Okay, and interesting to note that J.R. Tolkien, Lord of the Rings writer, studied the poem Beowulf and wrote a lecture on it in 1936 called Beowulf, the Monsters and the Critics. I feel like we already know that. I feel like you told us that already. I, we did a bonus episode. Oh. At the beginning of the podcast three years ago. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, what a good memory so I have. Ago. Yes. And RJ was a big Tolkien fan, so there's some connections. So I just want to extract a little bit of information okay. about Grendel. And can I just do a super shameless plug? Do it. Because that bonus episode is up on our Patreon, 
currently. Hey, there you go. If you'd like access, self you can join allowed, our. Right? Absolutely, <laughs> self plugs are allowed. Are you gonna Are you gonna pay us to plug our own stuff? No. Is that how advertising works? No. Okay. But people can support us, and then therefore gain access to fun bonus episodes. Okay. How about that? Listen to Brad lecture about things sometimes. You people know? apparently like that. I, I don't, don't understand it, but <laughs> some people get it. Okay, let's do this. So back to Grendel, <laughs> the important part. So in the poem, Beowulf is the hero who comes to the aid of Hrothgar the king. That's less important. But Beowulf slays a monster that's been attacking them. So the monster is named Grendel, and it's curious for a few reasons. One of which is that Grendel is actually a horrifying male monster. Ooh. A little bit different. Not quite the same as our Grendel from what? At all. Still a monster. Grendel's a terrible person. I like her. I, I know that you do, but she's also not a like, disgusting monster male creature. Oh, no. She's the opposite of that. Opposite. Yeah. However, in the poem, we have Grendel's mother who attacks Beowulf after Beowulf slays Grendel. And Grendel's mother is often depicted as a shape-shifting seductress. Oh! Interestingly, played by a super weird CGI Angelina Jolie in the adaptation of Beowulf. No. Yeah. I watched it a long time ago, like before any of this. A way CGI ba- adaptation so this of Angelina thing. Jolie. The entire movie is like weird CGI, sort of like it was when they first started doing it. And then Angelina Jolie is there CGI-ified. You can look it up. I am. I'm Angelina literally Jolie, looking it up Bale, right now. The movie now. is Beowulf. Check it out. Okay. You see that? Seductress. I right? can tell. Okay. Whoa. Right? I know. Okay. Every, everybody's curious now. I should watch this movie. It's pretty old. It's pretty old. and it's 2007. That's pretty old. <laughs> that's not that old. When you say old, old, it's not like... Uh, okay. This was peak Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie time, by oh, the way. Oh, heck yeah. Anyways, but we do know that in Grandall, in our Watt version... The name is used as a way to scare children, so that also fits with, like, RJ's version of Tails being twisted and coming around again, where you kind of have that Grendel being the monster creature. Yeah, sure. Who terrifies, but then the seductress being Grendel's mother, so it totally fits. And FYI, in the poem Beowulf, there's also a dragon, because, you know, dragons. Of course. And someone steals treasure from the dragon... And then the dragon wakes up and starts killing people, but then the dragon is defeated. Which should sound very familiar to some Lord of the Rings fans out there. Smog. Yeah. It's smog. It's the same. The desolation of smog. Because guess what? Tolkien got a lot of his stuff from other stuff. Well, and As he, all writers do. And all writers do. And all yes. you need to do is say, I read this and liked it and took inspiration. That's all you have to do. That's all you have That's to say. That's all you say. gotta say. You don't have to say anything. You just say, Look hey. at that. Look at that double you reference. Say, <laughs> you gotta say, hey, I've read fantasy stuff subtle before. subtle double <laughs> reference. <laughs> it's a reference and a dig. Okay, I love it. All right. You had that one planned. I did. And we're back to bit. the bubblegum vodka until my parents get into town with the blackberry whiskey <laughs> that we can't buy here. Can't purchase here. Yeah. So. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That's, a, that's a kick to get us started off. <sighs> okay. All right. So we are talking about chapter 12, New Alliances. Yeah. But the last time we were here, well, okay. My last time is a little bit... I went to the beginning of the book. Sure. To do a quick recap of what everyone else is doing because we're kind of like jumping into brand new stuff. Okay. So, Elaine and Nynaeve and that whole crew used the Cloud Bowl. Yep. Which is important for this chapter. Yes. Perrin is in profit territory. Yep. And is pretend... Solving problems. Real king of Gildan. Yep. Fail has more gaze as a servant. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing that's happening. Plus... Last episode, we talked about how Savannah is terrible, but also so are the Shido, and so are the Shanchen, and so is Galena. Yes, they're all terrible. They're all terrible. Yep. They're all together doing terrible things. And here we go. Now, what's important here is when we last saw Grandal. Yeah. Grandy. Yep. Grandy and Sammy were doing things. They were bamboozling the Shido together. Dynamic duo. They were working at it, yeah. and Savannah got all mixed up in that with the pretend traveling boxes. True. 
And with peeping Moradin. Yes. So. He was watching. Moradin was watching. Moradin knows what's up. Right. Which is also important and for this also, chapter. And also, Shidar Haran was watching at one point and knows what's up. Grandi and Sammy were spied on two separate times. Mm-hmm. While conducting their bamboozling experiment. Which is important because Grendel is not letting that be known by people. And She but, doesn't want to be attached to Samuel. But here's the thing, Grandy. People know. People know. And, and now, then Samuel died maybe. And I want to hear your perspective. Yeah. Because we get a bunch of people this chapter. I knew you were going to ask me. Well, confirming. you got like eight people saying, oh, he's dead. Did he's you dead. know? He's dead. He's dead. So he's either... Dead. Either that's like confirmation that he's dead, or that's like definitely a ruse. Uh, he's definitely not a dead, ruse. Mm-hmm. right? So yeah. it's it's either he's dead or he's not dead. We're back. We're back to that. Back to that question. So I just want to see where you stand on that after we're done talking. Um, I can tell you where I stand on it right now. Oh, okay. I don't even think I need to talk about okay. it. Okay, all right. I actually think that I am swayed further in the direction. You know how I said. He's dead, yeah, and I don't like that I'm predicting that because sure. it doesn't make sense in my brain that he's dead, and I don't even like that I'm saying it, but I want to predict it anyway. Yeah, I'm swayed more in that direction that he's dead. Oh, he's dead. He's gone. Yeah. Okay. I I do think that, even though it goes against every fiber of my being. Okay. Here's why. Okay. Here's my rationale. Can okay. I explain? Sure, go for it. So in this chapter, which is, and we're just covering one chapter, so yeah. you know, we got some time to talk for a minute. Okay. In this chapter, we talk about how Grandel has raided Ilian and Samuel's all Samuel's all cool Samuel's stuff. cool stuff. Yeah, raided it. Yeah, we have Mogedian, who we know is not really acting of her own volition at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> confirming that he's dead. Okay, <laughs> right, and then Grandel really believing that he's gone. Yeah, like yeah. without Mogi saying that. Yeah, so. I just think that if Samuel didn't die in Shatter Logoth mm-hmm. at the end of book seven, yeah. that he would have just like reappeared in Ilian and pretended like nothing was wrong. Like he would have appeared to Grandal and been like, yo. Okay. okay you know, like okay. I just think that he's too arrogant to just like go into hiding. To just go yeah, into yeah, hiding. Yeah. Okay. I get that. You know, I, I get that. I get that. Like, I don't think so. To let Rand believe that he killed him, I just don't think that Samuel could do that. Yep. Like, within his person. Like, he's just not somebody who's good at stuff like that. I think that's a good... I think that's good. Yeah. I think, I think he did a good job there. I think at least he would show up to Grandal and be like... Yo, my, my <laughs> they think I'm dead. They think I'm dead, and yeah. it's hilarious. Wait for and my this glorious is return. this is my plan all along, and he'd swing it, right? <laughs> yeah, he would. Or something. Yeah. I okay. I, I get. Yeah, I like. And it. now we get that it's been a week or whatever, and so I yeah, I don't think he would just disappear unless cool. he was actually dead. Good. So I think I'm swayed a touch further, but I do still have like three percent of no, my body. My... <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no way that it's a hundred percent. But okay. All right, chapter 12, New Alliances. Chapter symbol is snake. For snaking. For snaking. There we go. Yeah. Now, it's the for snaking symbol that kind of looks like a Celtic-y thing. I think it's the first time we got it this book, and that's why I wanted to just really mention, in case people don't know. Oh, okay. That's all. Like, not the first time we've ever, we've gotten this one lost. No, it's the first time this book, though. It's not, though. What? Oh, we got a chapter two. Good thing that I'm 100% keeping track of all of these yeah. chapter titles okay. for your quiz at the end yeah, of this. Right, right. Here I go. I'm nailing this. Remembering okay. all of it. Yeah, we're on chapter 12 right now, so, okay. <laughs> we're like halfway through the book almost. <laughs> Shoot. Okay, I've been keeping track. We are, oh, yeah. yeah, we're getting there. You're going to be so surprised. <laughs> I'm going to... This is a... You're throwing me off. This is my fake For a, a, even more glorious victory at the end. My ever glorious right? okay. victory. Nice. Yes. Okay. I am an Ebudar now. Good reference. Thank you. Yeah. I, I know things. Isn't it ever victorious? <laughs> oh, is it the Shanchen? <laughs> yeah, the Shanchen's army. Is it ever victorious? Ever victorious army? I think we've talked about this ah, too. Ah, shit. Yeah. We have talked about this before. Yeah. This is why we don't start the episode with a shot. That's, I don't know what's happening. I know. <laughs> ever glorious that Vict- would be a budar yeah, yeah 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 okay let's go into this perspective grandy grandy is currently finishing writing a letter and she thinks about how she wishes 
There was even a simple transcriber among the things she had removed from Ilian after Samuel's death. And I was it's a, like... It's a pen microphone. It's I a was dictaphone. Like, is this speech to text yes, technology? Yes, it is. A hundred percent. Absolutely. It's not a dictaphone because a dictaphone is literally just a voice recorder. Right. Okay. So it's a... So it's that a, someone it's voice physically can transcribe later. Yeah. <laughs> this is actual speech to text technology. It is, yeah. It's assistive technology. Yeah. I I always feel like this is what RJ wishes he had while yes. he was writing these books. <laughs> Actually, yeah, and now it's so like I use yeah. it in my classroom all the time for my students with learning disabilities. Yeah, like writing, it's who, fantastic. Who yeah. With writing technology and... is good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, huh. Sorry. How about that? Okay. But anyways, she likes some of the stuff she took, like the birds, the bird cages, thousands of them. No, just hundred, <laughs> just a hundred, just a hundred. Oh man, don't get ahead of yourself. Bird? Oh man, <laughs> I, I'm sure, I'm sure there's bird fans out there. I've had birds. Yeah. Birds are not the most uh, good smelling of animals. You Interesting. Can have. Just like mm-hmm. in my personal mm-hmm. experience mm-hmm. of owning. That's how I feel about hamsters. As a, as a kid, I had hamsters yeah. too. Yeah. Yuck. I had hamsters. Yeah. Gerbils. Yeah. Rabbit. Yeah. Like, I had lots of pets I as a kid. I know you did. Yeah. Lots of pets. Uh huh. Tell you about them, and none of them smell that great. No. Birds. Animals and... <laughs> in general. Birds are not up there. Right. Okay. But if I had some like garden and i had someone to take care of them for me yeah or something yeah then like maybe some budgies but i'm kind of scared of yeah. birds had budgies yeah but you didn't have servants to take care of it for right, you right and you didn't have a giant right. manor that's true that's true right like yeah yeah <laughs> different <laughs> good, context good point good point okay so now this is the point where we learn that she had gone in and raided yeah got all the good stuff and she sort of goes in and out from when Rand and the Ashaman are there. Which is really interesting. Because they are there often, but she sneaks in when they're not there. Yeah, she's sneaky. She is sneaky. Okay, but at this point, she signs the letter and seals it with a signet ring of Eridomen. Yeah. And she has a bunch of signet rings from, like, different places. Well, we, we need a little bit of a recap, so... Okay, she, tell me. Yeah, so she took over Eridomen. Okay. And she's basically living in a palace there. Yeah. And Al Salam is the king of Eridomen. Who? So Al Salam, the name that we get? Mm. Yep, okay. Because the guy comes in because she writes a letter and she tells the messenger guy to take the letter to Lord Iteralda as fast as you can and say only what I told you to. So the message the guy repeats is I received this from Lady Tuva, which is like her first her fake, her fake name probably. Oh, is that when she's masking as the old lady? No. Oh. No. Because she did do that for she once. She did. She did. <laughs> so this is interesting because we know Lord Iteralda and Lord Iteralda is in the same chapter of when Grendel took over Eridomen when we saw her and we learned that at the beginning of Lord of Chaos when she took the palace, used compulsion on basically everybody and then Samael comes in and she tries to tell him all about this, the Shara stuff. The Sharon leaders that she, like, kidnapped. That was possibly part of the big, like, throwing Shara into chaos. Right. That okay, happened. yeah. So she was posing as the Lady Basseni or Basin. And, and that was the old lady. That's And that's when the Lord Iteralda showed up at the palace to talk to Grendel, who posed as... Old lady. Old lady. Okay. And Lord Iteralda is one of the great captains. We like, know, of the five? Of the five. Ooh. Lord Iteralda is one of the five. And now there's only four great captains. Because, because Niall's dead. Because Niall's dead. And Gareth Brynn is one. Gareth Brynn. We've got Lord Iteralda. Yep. We've got Egelmar. Ooh. Who I we didn't know. I remember him on the list. Okay. We know Egelmar. He's part of the secret Borderlander plan stuff. Oh, yeah. All of that All that stuff. And then Davram frickin' Bashir. And Davram Bashir. I didn't remember that. Yeah. I remembered Niall and... Brin. Yeah. Okay, and then Iteralda. Iteralda. So that's the and, guy okay. who she is now sending Taking a letter a message to. to. Yeah, and then the whole message is I received this letter from, or even just this like the fake person who died of her wounds after telling me that she was a courier from Al Salam, who's the king of Eridomen, and had been attacked by a gray man. So that's the message. And then well, here's she, the thing. If you're attacked by a gray man, you're dead. You don't have time to write a letter. 
but they, I, yeah, I mean, we're not really sure. And we I mean, don't know, I guess maybe you know, Everalda doesn't know as much about Grey Men as I do. Right, you do know, you know a lot. You're pretty, you know a lot of stuff. I know so. way more about Grey Men than but I we're gonna bet put, he But we're going to put some human blood on it for a good effect, too. Oh, yes. Don't, don't ruin the message. Don't ruin the letter. Don't ruin the letter. Just, you know, get it tastefully. And, a tasteful sprinkling and of human blood. And side note, where Grendel is from... They would be able to tell the difference between human blood and animal blood. Yeah. But she thinks that these primitive beings... Probably can't, but she's can't. been surprised. Yes, by so some like, things that be, they can do. Yeah, let's be sure about that. Let's be sure. So we so know she it thinks all about the, how, It's good. Okay, good. I'm really glad you explained that all to me because I didn't get any of it and I didn't write any yeah. of it down. So it's a letter from the king to the great captain, but it's a fake letter. About Something. a woman who died. Yeah, to get a message from the king to Lord Iteralda. Got it. Great captain. And now this guy is under compulsion. We don't know this guy, Nazran. No, this is just messenger dude who's compelled by Grendel. Okay. Yeah. So he's going to go. He's yeah. going to get the message there. And Grendel also found a little ring angriel yeah. in Samuel's stash, super which cool. she's like super happy about. But now, more powerful. Is this from the stasis box he had, or are Quite we possibly, assuming or the stash. that potentially, because we found out a couple episodes ago, yeah, that potentially the Ebudar stuff happened a few days mm -hmm. before the Shatter Logoth incident, yeah, like that yeah. whole night, and so potentially we think that Samuel was the one who was directing with the golem. Yep, and the thieves. And the thieves getting the stuff back to him. Yes. Potentially. Yep. Right? So it could have been Is stasis. Is that accurate? That's, yes, absolutely. So it okay. could have been stasis box, could have been the stash, we don't know. But it was in Samuel's stash at the time, and now she has it. Because he did have stuff. Yeah. Because when he gave the oath rod and the, like, quote, traveling boxes... To Savannah. The traveling box were fake. Those don't count. No, 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 I know. But when he gave, like, all that. Yeah. When he gave stuff. And timeline's a little bit, you know, we don't know. And that's probably stasis box. It could be. It could be. It could be. <clears throat> okay. We don't know enough. All right. Well, now, suddenly, there's a vertical slash of light, like a gateway is about to open, but then there's a crystalline chime that rings out, and... Grandal is surprised yeah. and thinks a courtesy from a more <laughs> civilized age. It's a good system. And then she sends a response chime. Ding dong. To, yeah, it's a doorbell. Ding dong. It's legit. That I was going to say. Who is it? Yeah. They should do video messaging. Send a video. KGB. Yeah. KGB waits for no one. That's no, good. I know. That's but, exactly. But yeah, doorbell. And also reduces the risk of like cutting people in half. Exactly. With your it's door. a it's legitimately it's a it's a courtesy. Okay. Now, because your parents are going to be coming soon yeah. for a visit. Uh-huh, yeah. Imagine your mom is now able to open a gateway directly from her house yeah. to your house. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Love it. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> come on in whenever would they ring the doorbell? Ding dong. Or do they just open the door? No, doorbell. And they would come when invited. And they would come when we need babysitters. There you go. Perfect. That is the disadvantage to having... I will take the slight risk of being cut, <laughs> cut in half of the door. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> but Open it in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> rope off a little area. I've, That's why you rope off areas. I've always said, this is my favorite superpower. Yeah. It's pretty teleporting good. Teleporting is my good. favorite superpower ever. If good. I could just like teleport to like Italy for lunch. Yep. You know, I would do it. Right. I, I would put that on record. Yeah. I, I will I put would, that on. I would do that. I would do, I would do that <laughs> thing if I could. Okay. All right. Here's the deal. Okay. <laughs> doorbell. There are more important things than the Ding doorbell dong. to talk about the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a little. Okay. Okay. So she sends a chime back. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> and the gateway opens up and two women come through. One is Mogedian and both of these women are wearing matching red dresses. And Grandy thinks that this woman is Mogi's new sidekick uh -huh. trying to dress like Mogi. Yeah. And she thinks that color is all wrong for her. Well, and we know what these dresses are. They're 
Moradin's favorite colors. Well, yeah. He, yeah like, it's yeah, the uniform. That's, yeah. It's not good. So, but that that's the thing. We got a new woman in the mix. Mm, more bad people enslaving other bad people. Right. So we got the long silver hair, vivid blue eyes, cold stare, pretty. Yeah. And by her demeanor, she could have been the prime counselor forced to endure the company of common laborers. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, that sounds like an Age of Legends reference yeah. coming from her. But that coming doesn't sound Grendel, so yeah. legendary about the class system there. That oh. sounds like the prime counselor forced to injure company of common laborers. Ugh, right? disgusting. Come on. Well, it reminds me of Tyr. I know, but that's the thing. It's like, it's it like the sound... nobles just like hate the common people. Well, where did they get it? Disgusting. Age of Legends Poor people, people. yuck. Right? Ugh. Age of Legends wasn't as legendary for everybody. Oh. That's what I've been telling. I've been saying Fair. that. Except that, you know, people had it pretty good, I think, in their own societies. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, right? I mean, like we saw like Aiel... Who are technically like the, you know, might be commoners, you no, know, I, in their I, gardens. I get what you're saying. That generally they speaking. They had nice lives. Generally speaking, They just like weren't were treated well by the Supreme Council or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, anyways. Yeah, we can move on because. Grandal is introduced to this new woman. New whose woman. Whose name is? Sindane. 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 And Grandal knows that this name means last chance. So what does that tell us about this person? This is the other mind trapped person. This well, we get that. But this is it. it has we to get be... that? Like clarified? Yeah, it's in the chapter. Oh. Yeah. So but this my has speculation to be... is right. It's a reincarnated person. Mm. Last chance? It's a reincarnated woman. I mean, why? Because Grandel can feel her power. And the women who can feel Halima okay. can't feel her power. Because Halima because uses... Because she used to be a man. Yeah, okay. okay. That's the logic. Okay. That I, fa- it tracks. I, white, Aja, it logic... It tracks. You did. That. Boom. It tracks. Suck it, book. <laughs> Here's the situation, though. Yeah. Moradin is someone that I've decided... Isn't a Forsaken and I didn't know previously. Okay, you yeah, you did land on that. Yeah. I landed on that. Okay, okay. This person also could just be someone else. I mean, it could be, it but the name ha- Last Chance is like very telling. Well, it's somebody potentially who disappointed in Okay. Away. Okay. 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 Um Okay. Women who have died who are Forsaken? Lanfear. That's it, right? If we think Lanfear's dead? Yeah. The rest are accounted for. Well, then I hate this because I don't think Lanfear's dead. And then this doesn't make sense. Whoa, because that means that if Lanfear is dead, that yeah. means that... Uh, not not necessarily because maybe... Say it, say it. Moraine killed Lanfear. What? In the... Yep. Why? Because she needed her... She wasn't dead when they la- fell into the... Yeah. And then Moraine found a way... Killed her. To escape. Killed Lanfear and... Maureen is still alive. I'm just going through my... Okay, here's the thing. I have a glossary definition for you. No, what? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, then it's time for glossary definitions with Brett. Okay, so this is from The Forsaken in the glossary definition. Okay. And I'm going to read you like the last little bit of it. Okay, is it long? Is that why? Yeah, I I, I can skip like, you know, lots about the Forsaken. Anyways, so the Forsaken, who call themselves the Chosen, are somewhat reduced in number since their awakening in the present day. The known survivors are Demandred, Semarog, Grendel, Masana, Mogedian, and two who were reincarnated in new bodies and given new names, Osengar and Erengar. Recently, a man calling himself Moradin has appeared. And may be yet another of the dead forsaken brought back from their grave by the Dark One. Oh. May. Yeah. The same possibility may exist regarding the woman calling herself Sindane. But since Erengar was a man brought back as a woman, speculation as to the identities of Moradin and Sindane may prove futile until more is learned. Huh. Huh. Cool. Think about that one. Okay. So logic doesn't matter? I mean, you know, it can get you as far as you wanted to get you. Okay, so what you're saying is my Asmodian mind trapped prediction could be true. It probably isn't because you did kind of logic it out that, you know, he was able to channel Sidene as a man. And if he's brought back and put into a different bot, we don't know how it works. I mean, you know, we don't know. 
And is it possible? This is not maybe? Asmodian energy. No, it's not. No. And that's the question I was going to ask. So, if you're brought back, how does that affect your personality? Are you the same person still? Because, like, we don't know too much about the one person we have, like, some sort of a little bit of confirmation. Balthamel being Erengar being Halima. Like, we know that he wasn't happy about being put in a woman's body, but we don't know too much about who Balthamel was. Right. Besides, probably a big jerk. Right. Because he was in so little of Eye of the World. Right. So, I mean, Sindane energy, you're probably roughly the same person. It feels like Latinfear energy. But I don't like that, that puts prediction. puts a lot of... <laughs> okay. Because, like, who else? Yeah. You know? Yep. And then we just need the, the how, the what, the why. Because who else died? Bilal. I don't know anything about Bilal. Bilal's gone. And here's the thing. He I was bail-fired. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's true. Okay. Bilal was bail-fired. And then, oh, Baalzaman. Yeah. Ishamael. 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 Could Moradin be Ishamael? I mean, here's the I thing. I could see we, that. We're not even in the part where Moradin is named Nablus yet. No. That part, yeah, I mean, like, it all, it's all a thing. So here's that one I can get on board with because I've been trying to figure out. At one point in this chapter, I actually think that Shaidar Haran is Moradin and he can take a human form because we don't. Interesting. Okay. Because, okay. I'm not let's say actually no to that. let's keep going. Okay, okay, we'll get and there. And then maybe we can because we actually have quite a bit to cover. We do, yeah. And I'm, you know what? <laughs> I I was wondering why we were splitting these up, and now I see. Okay. There's so much content. There's too much content. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Sindane means last chance, which means that she fucked up. <laughs> yeah. She done fucked up. Yeah. She gone and done it. So. Grandal asks about why they're here and tells them not to worry about talking, you know, in front of the servants. And then a little surprisingly, Sindane is super arrogant and says, what's the point of them if you destroy anything interesting in them? And we know Lanfear didn't like Grandal's servants yeah. in the past. See, now I'm okay. picking things out that okay. I don't necessarily... Okay. Okay. I mean, this is a you thing, so I mean, you I know. go with it I just as far as you want to go with it. I just don't want to go with it yet. Okay. So then, Grandal... Does the last chance thing, if it is Lanfear, like, you messed up big time to be mind trapped now. Yeah. Like, is that something that would happen to Lanfear? Yeah. I mean, all Lanfear ever tried to do was try and, like, get her ex-boyfriend back. Like, that's basically what her M.O. was the entire time. The entire time. Was, let's let's become a dynamic or duo and overthrow is, the Dark One, too. Yeah, or <laughs> if this is somehow... My gut more feels like this is somebody who isn't reincarnated. And it's just, like, somebody else. Okay. You know? Because, like, this world knows the chosen forsaken. But sure. there are other powerful people. That's true. That's true. Who are from the Age of Legends. That's true. And RJ is a fan of introducing new characters. No. Okay. Also, I take it back. Oh, man. Morden is a hundred is not Ishmael. Okay. Because Ishmael was like out the whole time. And when we were first introduced to Morden. What do you mean out the whole time? Like when the Dark One was imprisoned. Okay. He wasn't out the whole time. No. He, he came like, back every thousand years to mess with Okay. But still... If I go back to look at when Moradin was introduced, he was like, this age sucks. And like, he was kind of talking about how this age sucks and okay. everything. He, he, I, okay. I feel like that's right. <laughs> that might be completely wrong. I'd have to check. That's true. But that doesn't feel like Ishmael to me. Ishmael was also like crazy though. Like he was having some issues. Like Fire, Balsamon, Fireface. Balsamon. Yeah really had some problems uh, is this ever gonna actually crisis. be revealed do we ever learn probably just in subtle ways right i mean there might be like, some definitive statements we can make okay in the future okay yeah but not today <laughs> yeah no i really don't know what i can yeah. say after all of this but yeah. let's see okay just like talk we'll just talk, keep we'll talking talk i'll go. keep thinking i'll keep yelling things out so yes. this is a fun one so, Sindane asks Grandal if she knows that Samuel is dead. And up until this point, Grandal was intending on keeping her relationship with Sammy completely secret. But then she realizes that this Sindane woman is stronger in the One Power than she is. That and she helps changes your, her game your, plan. That helps your Lanfear thing, because Lanfear was, like, strongest. I don't want things that help my Lanfear thing, but... I'm just saying what for and against. 
That is, that's in the four column. Okay, and then she says, I suspected he was dead. Yeah. And then Grendel <laughs> deflects a bit more and asks Mulgadian who this woman is because she still thinks that it's some dark friend sidekick. And it's like, why is she taking the lead on this when, like, Mulgadian is still one of the chosen? Yeah, and so Sidene is still doing all the talking. And Sindane. What did I say? Sidene. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Okay. She says... She told you my name. That's all you need to know. And then ask Grandal if she's been paying attention to the weather. Yeah. And Grandal's like, I don't want, she's like, I don't want to talk about the stupid weather. Well, it's also funny because like she literally locks herself in like a she dungeon. Hates she weather. hates she, the she weather. She hates the weather. Have you been outside? Yuck. Bugs? No thanks. Yeah, it's so hot out there. <laughs> so Grandal realizes that she's letting this newbie do all the talking. So she asks Mogedian directly why they're here. And then Sindane says, you make a mistake. I'm the captain now. <laughs> Mogedian isn't in a good spot with Moradin. And then... This is the mind trap confirmation. Sindane's eyes open wide and she gasps and shudders. So she, she has a mind trap. Is she not allowed to say his name or something? Is that part of it? Or we is it... don't know. Okay. But we've seen that happen specifically with Mogedian with her mind trap where it's like when he touches the mind trap yeah and then it's like a feel feels like it's pressing on your soul and he's gonna crush you yeah because he probably just does it every once in a while for you know well i mean this is like pretty timely it is it absolutely is too he's probably like listening in on this conversation (laughs) yeah so he gets sindane doing that and then mogedian says you lead for now you're not in a much better position than I am. Yeah. And then she gasps and shivers. She does. The thing. And then Grandel doesn't know what's happening. Yeah. So, so now Grandel wonders if they're messing with her somehow because these two women seem like they absolutely hate each other. And she sits down in her big throne chair and acts <laughs> all bored and stuff. Yeah. She also is like, hey, is this like a bit? Are they just pretending to hate each other to like catch me off guard? Yeah. Like what's happening? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Playing the whole Swan Liana. Totally. Yeah. yeah. But no, then she says, tell me about this man who calls himself Death. Who is he? What is he? Yeah. And then that is what triggered me. And I was like, what do you mean? What is he? And then I was like, oh my gosh. Then in a minute, they're like, Morden is Nablus. The great Lord has decided it's time for you to serve Nablus too. Yeah, he's number one. He's number one. Number one guy. Regent on Earth. Yes, this is concrete evidence that they're on Earth, too. Oh, also that. I just want to point that out. So it's at least what they call Earth, because she says it's the Great Lord's Regent on capitalized Earth. Earth. So it's like, come on. I feel like we've seen that before. We've We've seen seen... lowercase Earth. Oh, have we? We have. Oh, okay. This is uppercase Earth. This is Earth. Earth. This is Earth. Okay, anyway, (laughs) this was when my mind went to Shidar Haran being able to take a human form. Okay. Okay. In Moradin. Okay. Because right now, it really seems like Shidar Haran is the, like, number one to the Dark One. He yeah, well, he's speaks, the hand. He's he, like, the hand sp- of the Dark. He, speaks for the Dark One. And I don't know anything about this at all. Yeah. And so, why can't he just have a human form That's to true. go talk to people it's on basically Earth? like a Super Fade and maybe new Super Fade ability is potentially because at this point i'm still not convinced that morden is somebody reincarnated but what's the point but we've gotten the thought process of like we've been in shatter haran's head yeah separately named separately from morden too really yeah we have oh we did we did get that okay so probably not shatter haran is like a, a separate entity here Okay, so, so probably like not the theory, but probably it's not like, that doesn't quite fit with what we've seen so far. Okay, yeah, none of this fits. That's true. If if I'm I'm doing the thing where I'm jamming the puzzle pieces in, you're like this fits, this fits, and it's like if you push hard enough, sure, it fits. <laughs> it's not in the right place. It's like though. this picture is not coming together. <laughs> We're back to the jigsaw with the pieces. I've just finished one jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. Remember last episode, I just finished a jigsaw puzzle. Oh man. Nope. <laughs> this I am missing so many pieces. Here. That's okay. You're not supposed to know everything when we get introductions to new characters. You're not supposed to know all of it. I right just now. wish that I could. You know. I get it. I, I get just it. wish that something could click and be like, I know exactly what's happening. 
Yeah. That doesn't happen often for me. That would and make I just, me feel worse because, like, I don't think anybody ever knows what's happening no, with the first read-through. Like, but you're not supposed to. nobody is going through it the way I am, That's true, typically. too. You're still getting further than a lot of people. Yeah. We're going slow enough that it's like, you know, okay. we're getting there. We'll get okay, there. Okay, so Grandel doesn't believe this whole nameless thing. Yeah. And now she's angry, and she goes, a guy I've never heard of is the Dark One's regent on Earth. And now Grandal has had enough of this and tells the two women to get out. Yeah, do Leave it. now. Stop playing yeah. this game. Go N- away. Nablus is a big deal. And then suddenly, Mogidian channels, and every lamp in the room goes out, putting all of them into darkness, and Grandal flings into action. Yeah, she, like, jumps out of her chair, so she's not in the same place where they last saw her. Yeah. Uh, it's actually pretty straight. And she like, weaves it's a, a good... spear of light to shine yeah. on the two women. It's good reaction. Like, good reaction time on yep. her. Yeah, and counter then attack. using the angriel, she weaves a net of compulsion both... Gets them. ...on the women. Gets them. Yeah. Gets them both. It works. Yeah, and good then they're her. under her command, and she asks, what did you hope to gain by this, Mogi? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, and then... Mogedian starts weeping and she says, please don't, please don't. You'll kill us all. You must serve Nablus. That's why we came here to bring you into Moradin's service. Yeah. And then Grandel starts to get super uneasy. Because they're compelled. So they have to be telling the truth. And yeah. then it's like they at least believe it's the truth from their perspective. Yeah. So then it's like, whoa, okay. Oh, okay. So you're actually, you're being honest here. Yeah. That, that makes it worse that you're being honest. Because that means that a guy she's never heard of is nameless. Is nameless and you now have to like, you know. Submit. Dark, yeah. yeah. You gotta, you gotta submit. Here okay. we go. Okay. So Grandel starts to talk. But then suddenly the source vanishes. She can't feel it at all. And the room goes black again. So that's something we know that Shider Haran can do. Mm, just shut everyone off? Yeah. They, he can like cut people Turn off. Turn the lights off. But on everybody. Well, yeah. But Moradin, we know, uses the true power. True power. So it's like they're, it, they're separate. Okay. So behind her, she hears a voice say, the great lord thought you might t- not take their word. Yeah. The time for going on your own way is past. And then some stuff happens that she doesn't understand. Like how this is all happening. Yeah. Yeah. And we know that this is Shida Haran, but this must be Grendel's first like real experience with the Merdral. So like this is all new for her. Yeah. It's super, super fade. Right. And she asks him if he's a messenger for the Great Lord. And she can see Mogedian groveling on the floor, so she's, like, very unnerved because she doesn't really know what kind of power this creature has. Yeah. Because, as far as she knows, it's just, like, a Merdral. It's a bigger, more powerful-seeming Merdral, yeah. but, like, the Chosen don't submit to Merdral, but then we got Mogedian. Yeah, submitting to this guy. So submitting, like, clearly, so... So, Shadow Haran introduces himself, tells Grandel that when he speaks, consider that she's hearing the voice of the Great Lord of the Dark... And then he kills her two servants, and Grandel's like, oh, man, they were the prettiest ones. <laughs> and then Grandel takes a second to consider her option, since Mogi and Sindane have their heads on the ground. She realizes that the Great Lord is definitely taking more of a direct hand in things now, yeah. and she does not want to get caught on the wrong side of this. So she kneels to the fade and basically asks what she can do. So here we go. Day of Return is at hand. Yeah, and now she is smart because she does ask him how to address him yeah and she sort of starts to banter a little bit yeah it's like hey i don't i don't want to address you directly as the great lord because you're not you're not exactly him because i serve the great lord and i want to make sure i'm respecting him yeah and then he's like oh you're brave i like it i I like like it it. but don't don't be too brave right So Shaira Haran does some threatening and then tells her the commands. So first she's to visit Moradin and Grandel thinks about how she'll have to look out for Mogedian and Sindane trying to get back at her because of the compulsion thing. A little revenge plot there maybe. Yeah. Probably not considering they're mind trapped. So yeah. yeah, Like no. It doesn't seem like she realizes that. No. But then she decides to keep the letter that she sent a secret for now. Because she does still have to look out for herself. Yeah. So it really is a question, too, of, like, what does Shatter Haran actually know? Yeah. Because he seems to know a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And so does Moradin. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Yeah. I guess we'll see. That might be an interesting meeting that happens in the future. Yeah. And she does think that this Moradin guy might be nameless today, but there's always tomorrow. That's true. 
All right, and that's the end of this perspective. So let's take a quick break and we'll get into the next one when we come back. Sounds good. All right, so we're back and we're going to jump into a new perspective and it is with Cad Swain. You know, there is some interesting little tidbits of information There's here. a few things that happen here. Yeah. But now, the last time we were with Cad Swain, she was at the Rebel Nobles Party. Yes. Yep. When Rand was stabbed by Padden Fane's dagger, and she was with them when they rushed him off back to the palace to be healed. Yes. And, and then he survived. And he survived. And that is relevant in this chapter. It is. She's got some street cred there. She does. Yep. Now, Codswain is riding in a coach through Kyrian, and it's sort of raining and pretty cold out. It's a BFD. It's a big deal. So much so. Yeah. That a dude. An Aiel. Pickpockets an Aiel. Yeah. That's a big deal. Because the Aiel is staring up at the sky. Yeah. Because it's raining. So entranced. It's been so hot. Yeah. And also, it's an Aiel, and so rain is a big deal. That's true, too. I feel like that's the biggest point here for the Aiel. But, like, very Because if it was just, like, a regular guy, yeah, you know, it'd be like, oh, my God, I'm in trance. It's raining. It's been so long. Yeah. But I think specifically the rain double, double. for the Aiel is water is falling from the sky. It's crazy. Because the only other time that happened for the Aiel was Rand. Crazy stuff, man. In Golden Bowl. Golden Bowl. Right? Yep. When Kuladin's tattoos did not wash off. Uh, you always have to bring up my failures. <laughs> They're the funniest, though. That was the, that was a good prediction. That yeah, was a good one. Okay. Man, I got some good predictions. Okay. All right. So now we do have some description of people all adjusting to the weather and everything. Yeah. And then Codswain is riding with two Aes Sedai who are discussing the weather. Yeah. And we have... The white sister who has logicked out. So that's Daigian, and we know her. She's one of the ones who rolled in with Cadswin originally. Yeah. And she's okay. like one of her like allies. Okay. Yeah. Now and she's like the weakest sister. She's weak but with a the, clever mind. Yeah, but like super weak, so she has to defer to everybody. And then Kumira, we don't really know her, but she's brown and she's also weak. Hmm. But I think that both of them are pretty smart, and that's why Codswain wants to utilize them. Because Aes Sedai are stupid and think that people are weak, and they're stupid and because they're And Codswain's using their big sexy brains. There you go. That's the sexiest part, is their big brain. There yeah. you go. I mean, like, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> you love me for all of my logic, right? <laughs> right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this white sister has logicked out that... The heat wave was killing most of the world, and it was definitely the Dark One's work, and then any change to that must have come from a different source, because what is the point of changing your plan when it's working? I mean, it's pretty good logic, because if it went out much longer, everybody's going to die. die. See, you need to care more about this weather situation. I mean, (laughs) okay, listen. No. No. I did. No. (laughs) I do. I care about the weather and it needs to be fixed. But. No. Cloud Bowl and that plot line was garbage. Nobody wants to hear it. No one wants to hear it. No, no. You know what I liked? You know, in Eye of the World, when the weather was like too cold for too long. Sure. And then they just like went to the blight. They fought some things and they came out. And then the weather started changing back. Yeah. Because of like something that happened inadvertently. But we got like a two, three month like time lapse between the end of book one and the start of book two or whatever. I'm like, aware. Two I'm aware. We just didn't All hear I'm about saying it. is. Everyone was like looking I'm at the weather. They're like, whoa, it's the crazy, plot man. The line <laughs> for this club bowl went on too long with an uneventful. Okay, like, let's move ending. along. Let's move along. I can rant about this I forever. I know you can. And the horse is dead already. We don't need to keep beating it. Beat it. Okay. And then cut it open and hide inside because it's about to get cold in there here. There you go. <laughs> we don't take shots for Star Wars, right? No, we don't. Okay, Tauntauns good. don't apply here. Okay. So, now, the brown sister here wants to see some hard evidence rather than using logic. And it's like, 
from where? Yeah. From what source do you want? You want to nope. go telephone next, the next dark subject, one? Please. Did you do this? Next subject, please. Yeah. Let's talk about something that is so even more aggravating. So she's not totally convinced. No. So the topic changes to the sisters that are being held by the Aiel, and Katwin snorts, and it's like, whatever. They deserve what happens to them. They suck. They ruined Maybe everything. they can atone for the dog's dinner they made of matters, but I doubt it. Yeah, so they butcher their relationship with Rand, the dragon reborn. They're not our problem. Her job is going to be more difficult. Yeah. So. She's pretty angry at the mess that they made. Yeah. I mean, and in any reasonable circumstance, you, like, if the Aes Sedai weren't terrible, you would want them to align with the dragon reborn and help guide him. Yeah. On his journey. But now Rand's just suspicious of everybody and it's not good. No. So now we get where they're going. They're arriving at the Sun Palace and Codswain tells the two sisters to focus on the task that she's set for them. Yeah, another sneaky plan. We yeah. don't really know. So now the guards let the coach right through the palace gates. Codswain fixes all the jubilee boobleys in her hair and thinks about how she never lost one because she's so careful with them. Mm-hmm. And then as they arrive, the servants come out to take their cloaks and offer them mulled wine. Yeah, because it is... A winter drink. It's winter. It's winter. It's, winter. it's chilly out there. We did it. So there's three other Aes Sedai waiting off to the side. And once the servants all leave, Cat Swain goes over to talk to them. And it's Bera, Morana, and Feldrin. Yes, yeah, so we know all of them because they are all the Saladar Embassy Aes I remember Embassy Aes Sedai. Bera because she's the other half of Bera and Karuna. Yeah. And now Morana is vaguely familiar to me. Morana was the original leader. Yes, who was that's taken why. out by okay. Bera and Karuna and then accidentally put back in power by Rand. Right. And, and then, in Rand's hand, one of those five? Yes. Okay. So all three of these ones? In Rand's hand. In Rand's hand. Okay. And Katswain asks about why they are here because the Aiel worked their apprentices so hard. And she's definitely taken a dig at them. But Bera, just straight faced, is like, we got a free day today because of the rain. Yeah, that's the situation. Just to touch on that, the five in the hand. Of yeah, Rand. okay. So that was Faeldrin, Bera, Not Karuna, Alana, Rafella, and Morana. Okay. Yeah. Rafella. Yeah. Interesting. So now Bera continues talking and tells Cadswain that they don't understand why she keeps coming back here. She clearly wants something, but she won't tell them what she wants. And they can't help her if they don't know what she wants. Mm-hmm. And so Morana speaks up and tells Cadswain that if they decide to oppose her, then they will. Yes, because again, they are in Rand's hand. Yep. They're going to serve. And Cadswain tells them that she didn't come to see them anyway. But these two sisters would probably like a visit since you have a day off. That's the secret plan. And That's the plan. they get bustled off. That's the plan. And the plan this works. this is what Cadswain wanted. Yep. Because... They're just going to listen and report back. Yes. Basically. That's the plan. So Katswin gets led through the halls. She gets some nods here and there of respect because of the story saying that she either helped or was responsible for saving Rand about a week ago. So she's probably on about a higher level. Yeah, she's know, she's at like top level of the Aes Sedai for respect right now because it's kind of getting a little bit twisted that like she saved Rand. She's not, like, she didn't start the rumor, but she's also not stopping that rumor. Yeah. She knows how it is. Okay, so they get to a room for Catswain, and she sends the servant to bring her Alana. And Catswain takes out her embroidery to wait, and we get this, like, freaking eight pages of her setting up her embroidery basket. Well, it's actually really funny, because she does have, like, knickknacks, but she's doing a thing where she's using her tools to create a situation which makes her look so cool. I mean, like, as cool as you can be with an embroidery hoop. Yeah, No, but it's like, because like she sets it up. Like calm and collected, so she, you mean? So she's facing away from the door. But she sets her thing up so, so she that can it reflects see. the door. So Alana, when she comes in, and then Katwin's like, oh, come in, Alana, but go over here. But she doesn't raise her head. And Alana's like, oh, man, how did she see me? But it's like the friggin' mirror, the reflection. The little reflection of yeah. her sewing thinger. Exactly. Now, did that is you the know technical name, yes. that we need to know about exactly all of which flowers and plants that she is embroidering? Uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool and disturbing image. Flowers and thorns? Well, the man's hand clutching the ancient symbol of the Aes Sedai, and, and you don't know, it? or holding it together. 
You don't know which. You don't know. It's because she's bad at embroidery <laughs> that you don't know. <laughs> no, it's interpretation. You know what? That works. And Katrin <laughs> was the one who was, like, retired, but then, like, tried to do the planting of the flowers, but then, like, if you use the power, it's uh, cheating, but then, like, taking care of plants is really is hard. hard. It's hard. And then she's just, like, embroidering them, so I Anyway, get it, it I went get on it. for so freaking long. It's good. We don't get... A recap on who Cad Swain is or anything like that, but oh my god, eight pages of her embroidery. So I dissected all the flowers and there's meaning behind no. each flower. <laughs> so Alana shows up and she sees her in the reflection but doesn't raise her head and Super says, cool. Come in, Alana. Very cool. And then Alana jumps and Cad Swain smiles because people don't notice obvious things when they're dealing with a legend. Uh huh. How arrogant. Yeah. So arrogant. Super arrogant. Yeah. Super arrogant. Anyway, so Alana comes out pretty strong and demands to know why Katswain keeps badgering her because she can't tell her anything else. And she almost says, he belongs to me. Yeah, he, yeah. Because, because the whole warder situation. He's her warder. Yeah. And Katswain yeah. tells her. No. That <laughs> she's kept Alana's crime to herself, but only because she doesn't want to complicate things. But then Alana... Needs to know that she still might, quote, core her like a cabbage. And Alana embraces Sidar. Yes. And Codswain tells her, oh, well, you know, if you really want to be foolish. So and, here, here, here's the thing. Yeah, what's happening here? Okay, well, okay. So Catswin is threatening Alana. And then Alana, who is, like, very on edge and not holding herself together very well, embraces Sidar in, like, defense. Mm. Which is, like, if you embrace Sidar... In front of someone who is clearly more hierarchical up on the hierarchy scale yes. than you. That's like, you're kind of almost picking a fight here. A so Cad's been like, hey, you really want to start this fight? Yeah. But the thing about RJ's writing is you he, he, he hides things in the words here. So I'm surprised you weren't more interested in the hair ornaments. Why I wasn't interested in her hair on, You're surprised I wasn't interested in her hair mm -hmm. ornaments. I'm going to go ahead and read her you the Her jubilee Yeah. So, the light of side art, Sean... Suddenly shone around her. Cadswin says, if you wish to be truly foolish, dot, 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 with a cold smile, she made no move to embrace the source herself. Oh, but she feels something on her face. One of her dangling hair ornaments, intertwined golden crescents, was cool on her temple. Now, we also know that she's been very careful with her hair ornaments. You and she's lose them. never lost them. Yeah. And one of them, when someone just embraced Sidar, went cool on her temple. Oh. But we've also just recently learned about matching jewelry that somebody who was digging through a bunch of garbage found. That isn't just jewelry. It's a triangle. It's a triangle set. Oh, I wasn't going to go there. I was going to <laughs> Matt's box head that goes cold when someone channels. Well, that might also be a triangle. Uh-huh. So Cat's with the okay. legendary I said I has a bunch of Terangriel possibly Just all in her, her hair, hair ornaments yeah. that she's very careful about. Of course. Yeah, which helps a legendary I said I. Of course. Yeah. Let's watch those hair ornaments. She's a legendary Pokemon. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so at this point Alana lets go of the power and Alana says, There isn't any more to tell than I've already told you. He was injured and then not but I don't think his sister healed him. The wounds that no one can heal are still there. He keeps leaping, traveling around. <laughs> He's all over the place. He's somewhere south in Alien, maybe Tyr. I don't know. And then Codswain tells Alana to keep her fully informed and thinks about how she may have done the same as Alana in her position. This is the hypocrisy part. In regards part. to the whole non-consensual bonding. Yeah. And at one point, Catswain did consider making Alana pass the bond to her, but now she <laughs> doesn't consider that anymore. Because it's not useful. It's not useful in controlling Rand. It's terrible. Terrible people doing terrible things still. Yeah. So Catswain threatens her a bit more, and Alana agrees to keep Catswain informed, and then Alana's eyes widen. Yes, yeah. And Catswain sees another person in the reflection at the door. Sneaky mirror. Yeah, but here's the thing. At one point, when Alana's saying that Rand is traveling around, yep. Codswain thinks to herself as a little foreshadow, Oh, traveling? How could the boy have figured out that lost in the Age of Legends? Right. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's all coming back. Here it is. So, it's Sorelia. She comes in, 
boots Alana out, and then Karuna shows up with a tray of drinks. Yeah, and then all, and then she leaves <laughs> immediately dismissed. Then, well, she leaves to go to her lessons, and I think this is important because Sorelia praises Karuna on how she can be really good if she keeps this up. Yeah, she's coming around. Like, Karuna's been a hard nut to crack. But this she's is what I've around. told you about the Aes Sedai, yep. and this is how they know to be trained. Once they know they're, like, spot Yes. Then they fall into it. They do. They're getting there. That's what they do. And, you know, it's not like they aren't learning new things. That's true. They are in a pretty good spot. And I wouldn't have thought that from the beginning. Yeah. No, that's that's a good way to look at it, too. And these are all the ones have the, who have the potential for being, like, on Rand's side at some point in some right, manner. Yeah. These aren't the death saying, the ones who kidnapped yeah, yeah, him. Yeah. These are all the, you know, salad or embassy. Right. So. And so Cotswain watches all of this. And the deference the sisters are showing, and she thinks that it's a remarkable show. Mm-hmm. But yep. she also did note that Karuna did seem legitimately pleased at the praise. Yes, yeah, she did. And so when Catswain and Sorelia are alone, Catswain asks if she really thinks that the sisters are going to learn the Aiel ways of weaving Sidar. Because apparently this is quite a difficult thing to do. Yeah, this is also like the, you know, technicalities of learning stuff. It's like once you learn it one way, it's really hard to learn another way because it's like ingrained into you then. Yes. This is like that whole riding a bike. Sure. And then have you seen the videos of people trying to ride a bike where when you turn the handlebars to the left, the wheel goes to the right? Have you seen that? Like when you, if you go fast, that's like how you ride a motorcycle though. It's like you break the. No, 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 no. So just a regular bike, but if typically on a bike, when you yeah. turn the handlebars to the left, the wheel also goes to the left. You, oh, okay. You turn okay. the way you want to go. Okay. But there are people who try to relearn how to ride a bike. Okay. And it takes Sounds horribly dangerous. So long, <laughs> yeah, because you try to turn left, yeah. but then the wheel goes right. Okay. okay. It's like an opposite. Opposite seize. thing. That sounds dangerous. Yeah, but it's also. A really interesting like psychological experiment for like figuring out mm-hmm, yeah. like how to do things new again kind that of is thing. cool so yeah. like tying your shoes i imagine it's like same way because there's more than one way to tie a bow well that's a little different but well, maybe say... maybe a thing yeah sure okay that's the one that came to mind for me was the like once you know how to do something it's really difficult to train your brain to do it yeah the opposite way or whatever my favorite part about this little piece here is just like the tidbit of the eye said eye where Cerulea even takes a dig. It's like, you know, you I should I always do all the Wave hand waving and stuff. Wave your hands around. Yeah. And at one point... <laughs> you one have point, to throw a fireball. Yeah, it's like, how would you throw a fireball if I'm not physically throwing a fireball? Yeah, she's like, like... You actually got to huck it. Yeah, <laughs> which is a little bit of a nod to the show, in a way, with the hand flailing. Oh, yeah, no, I get stuff. that too. Yeah. So, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see the wise ones hopefully doing like very minimal... Ah, I like it. Yes. I like it. Okay. I do even like the part where it's like you could even see who taught. Yeah, which lesson? Whom. <laughs> yeah, who, yeah, yeah, exactly. Based on like what motions you're doing, is yes. like, oh, you learn that from you know whoever. from this person who does that. I mean, that's yes. kind of like any workplace too. It's like, oh, where'd you learn how to do this? It's like, yeah. oh, then you know. Yeah. So, Cerulea brings up the fact here that the Aes Sedai seem to give an oath and then immediately try to find a way around it. Like, they're so schemy and yeah. that part she doesn't like. And they're in a bit of a conundrum with Alana now because of how they punish... They can't punish her. ...her because it means harming the Karakarn. Yeah, which is a big thing because like the secret water bond is not secret it's not secret. Rand's secret is out of the bag yes because alana told them we don't know how they know oh i'm sure Rand did not that's and that's very possible that i could see alana doing that there's no way Rand told anybody yeah no way no way but the fact that they know is pretty big alana so they don't want... definitely spilled the beans yeah. or a different i said i maybe yeah. like maruna who is or is that her name Nope, there's no Maruna. There's Karuna. Karuna? And, yeah. And Marana and Marana. Yeah. Marana. Mar- <laughs> Marana is le- less likely. I'd be like. <laughs> no, I think Marana would definitely really? tell them. Okay. She was there. She's kind of part of it and doesn't really have yeah. a stake in the game. Okay. I'm sh- Maybe okay. it wasn't Alana or Rand, and it's somebody who just knows and doesn't care and was sure. gossiping. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. they can't really punish Alana okay. because, you know, Karuna. So, Kotswain does tell Sorelia some information. 
that if they kill Alana, Rand will die sooner or later. Yep. And anything less of that, he'll be aware of, but being so far away, especially right now, he'll only be vaguely aware of. Yeah, so basically she's given the And so Cerelia... Like, you, you, you could, uh, you know, you could punish her a little. Does she, a you know, slow nod. She's like, oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So Cerelia says that they used to think Rand would take whatever was offered if it was attractive and pleasant. Avienda. Avienda. Yep. But they were wrong. <laughs> sort no, of. They weren't. Yeah. They were not wrong. It just was a slow burn. But like Avienda's not pleasant. <laughs> no. She's miserable. Oh, man. And now he's suspicious of everything. And so they have to do reverse psychology on him. Yeah. To get him to do anything. I don't care at all what and you Kat do. And Swain asks Cerelia if she thinks that a man must be hard or strong. Yeah. So this is actually important. And Cerelia the says. Dis- distinction. Most people. Most men. Yep. Think the two are the same, but strong endures and hard shatters. Yes. I like that. It's important. It's a good distinction. Yeah. They're kind of forming like a mutual business relationship. Kind of, yeah. And I I don't want to say friendship. But I think the actual reason for this is Codswain thinks Sorelia might be older than she is. And Codswain thinks she's like the oldest living person ever. Yes. At this point. Yeah. And so to meet somebody who like was alive four hundred years ago with you or whatever it was. It's pretty cool. Catswin's yeah. only three hundred. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whatever. I like three hundred should... and something something. Eh, no. Eh. It's just three hundred? Two ninety five to three hundred ish, somewhere in there. Oh. Okay. Like right around 300 there. years ago? Right around there. But then, let's meet some of those kinswomen. <laughs> right? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Defer to those. Yes. Ladies. Love so, Codswain pushes a little further on this conversation and says, you know, Ran needs to be strong, but he makes himself harder. He's forgotten how to laugh except out of bitterness, and he has no tears left in him. Unless he finds laughter and tears again, the world faces disaster. If he goes into Tarman Gaiden as he is, even if he wins, his victory might be as dark as his defeat. That's important because you don't want a dragon reborn who's like hard, cynical, suspicious of everybody in the world. Like, you don't want that person to go and fight your battle. You want someone who is level-headed, you know, strong, well, willing to go through this battle with you. Men channeling Sidene. They nope, go crazy. Nope, Sidene. Sidene. Sidene as we know it. It's, it's okay. Crazy. It's only been three years. So, get let's it. fix that. When are we fixing that? When are we fixing the growing Craziness. crazy thing? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Let's get on I it. get it. Hopefully, by the next time the wheel turns around... Well, you know what? Nynaeve and Elaine don't have a plot point right now. Ooh. Oh, that's not true. They're escaping the Shido and going to Camelon. Uh, nope, the not Shanshan. Shido. Shanshan. And they did escape the Shanshan. And they're headed to Camelon for, you know, a whole queen business. Okay, and then they need a plot line. Yeah, well, Nynaeve to... does. Nynaeve needs a plot Nynaeve's line. Nynaeve's not taking the throne. As no, far as we but know. Nynaeve needs to go rejoin Elaine, and Elaine has a whole task. Okay. White Tower. I'm just, like, trying to relate it back to my old original predictions. I get it. You know? Yeah, you know. Get that taint <laughs> cleaned up. Fixed. Clean it up. Fix it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it has to happen at some point, right? I mean, right, maybe. You can't just, like, go crazy. What? Yeah, no, you're right. Totally. Rand can't go crazy. Well, he's already crazy. Yeah, he is. He's been crazy. There's the problem is there's been too now. many mentions of it mm-hmm. for me to be like ah this is never happening you know <laughs> I don't know they just like people talk about it every once in a while and pique my interest again yeah you're like ooh soon maybe yeah no ish eight books okay. wait how many books do we have left yeah <laughs> less than that enough usually that's my go to ten books from now eight books from now right we only have like six books left yeah after this crazy, crazy. okay crazy. five books from now wow yeah. okay okay. <laughs> Just All in right. time. <laughs> okay. So anyway, Sorelia listens to what Catswain is saying and then tells her that they might be in the same situation right now because Rand only sees the Aiel as spears. And when one spear breaks, you don't mourn it. You just pick up another. Yeah. And Catswain. They've been trying to teach him up with the Aiel people. Yeah. It's not taking you very well. Yeah. Catswain, unless it's a woman, then it's a big deal. Then, then it's like, but that's the issue. He's not understanding the Aiel. No. Oh, no. That's the 
Well, yeah, he is, but he just chooses, like, he doesn't care. <laughs> it's like, that's neat, but have you heard my opinion? Yeah. So now I should do this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Codswain isn't positive that they have the exact same goals with Ren, but it is a start. Yeah. Because the whole Tarmin Gaiden, Dragon Reborn thing has nothing to do with the IEL. No, but, you know, it sort of it sort of does. Okay, so are you ready for the mic drop? Here we go, let's do this. Sorelia embraces Sidar, and she's even weaker than that other white or brown before yeah Daigen. yeah because it's like Daigian would seem like a average Aes Sedai compared to Sorelia it's really so like, is pff, nothing but barely. she's super old but she yeah. says here's something you might find useful I can't do it myself but it's called traveling and then Boom. tells Codswain sort of how to do it and Codswain's like oh my god I can't believe it I can't wait to do this by myself this is yeah. unbelievable okay so it's Codswain yeah Tell Sorelia that this is a great gift and she doesn't have anything she can give to compare. It's an IOU. Ah. Debt. And she knows that Sorelia knows that she's in her debt now. Yeah. And so Sorelia says, I can offer you water oath. By this, we are bound as one to teach Randall Thor laughter and tears. All right. And Katswin agrees, even though she's not sure yet. What Sorelia's goals really are. Katswin can travel, making her even more legendary now. But she even thinks to herself, it doesn't even matter because, number one, I'd have to know where Rand is to get to him, and I don't. And number two, I want to make him come to me anyway. Sure. That's all she's thinking of. Yeah. How can I use this with Give her Rand? Time. She'll, she'll come up with other cool things to do with traveling. Yes. She will. Such as going for lunch in Italy. <laughs> right. That's my go-to. That's my fave. Never not having toilet paper in the bathroom again. Ah. Boom. Gateway. Boom. Gateway. Yep. Arm out. Arm out. <laughs> That's when you're not strong enough. You just make a little gateway. Just a little gateway. Yeah. I don't actually need to eat uh, lunch in Italy. I just need to open it up to like a kitchen in Italy, steal a sandwich, <laughs> a, pull it through. A sandwich in Italy. That's what you're stealing? There are so many other things. Like some nice Italian sandwich. Pasta. Pasta. You know. Pizza. Some wine. Wine. Take some wine right out of a salad. All of those. Yeah, do that. Do those. Yeah. Although, um, yeah, there are some nice sandwiches too. Some good Italian meats and cheeses. You know? Yeah. Okay. All right. I think it's time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Time so. to leave. Time to leave. And just a reminder that next episode we are back to two chapters yeah we're gonna stay there for a little bit 13 and 14 yeah so that'll be exciting have fun reading so now before you try to figure out which forsaken is which forsaken is which forsaken i'm gonna say that this is part of the pattern now yeah it's part of the pattern Well, that's the end of another fun episode. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett, with Essen, Passion Socks, Mozyme, Moltude, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jamie Young, Cody Feltz, Megan Smiley, Jonathan Reese, Margaret, and Charlie Has, with music by Audionautics. If you are interested in supporting us and the podcast and also getting some really cool exclusive merch and access to early episodes and bonus episodes, you can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show and us, like how to send us shot glasses, how to join our discord, how to get in touch with us, things like that. For all things the wheel weaves, you can go to the wheel weaves podcast.com. Please be sure to give us that five-star review because it really does make a huge difference. And tell a friend about us because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening because this really is part of the pattern now.